The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking about the Albany Institute of History and Art, all fall events. In fact, we're going to be talking about things that may go right into the next year. We have with us the chief curator. His name is Doug McCombs. And we have also with us Elizabeth Beechand. Beechand. She's the museum shop manager, but I think she does a lot of other things too. So welcome. Thanks Thank for coming. You. We're going to be mainly talking about um, some of the three big events this fall, um, upcoming, the um, artists of the Mohawk Hudson region. We have the Antiquarian Book Fair, which is gonna be next, well, not next door, but right up the street. And under a really interesting one on quilts, it's called Undercover, Revealing Designs in Quilts, Coverlets, and Bed Hangings. So why don't we start with Doug, you're the chief curator. Before we talk specifically about these exhibits, what, what is, tell us what the church chief curator does. How far in advance do you prepare some of these? Uh, uh, I got a feeling sure. you probably <laughs> planned these a few years ago. I don't know. Well, sometimes, yes. Uh, exhibits can take anywhere from uh, a very short exhibit would be maybe nine months, ten months. Um, generally, we like to plan at least two, three years in advance. Um, some of them uh, can be developed as quickly as maybe a year or so okay. in advance. But it takes a while to really put everything together, the research, um, marketing, um, fundraising and, and everything that goes into an exhibition. Okay. Now this first one we're going to talk about starts September 27th and it's, it's the 78th annual. They've been doing this since the 1930s. It's the artists of the Mohawk Hudson region, and I don't know how many how many artists are involved in this. I think. I... Well, each year it varies by um, based on the juror. Oh, okay. um, each year there is a separate juror. Uh, this year our juror is Stephen Westfall. He's a uh, an artist in his own right, a painter, and he's also a professor at both Rutgers and Bard College. Oh. So um, this year he has selected 75 artists uh, for the uh, Mohawk Hudson Regional, as we usually call it, um, and that exhibition will open September 26. This is a Friday evening, and that will run through January 19th of next year. So it's a fairly lengthy run for us. Um, and uh, it's really a way for us to showcase the, um, the brightest and most talented artists working within a 100-mile radius of Albany and, and also Glens Falls area. And because, it's uh, a 100-mile radius? Yes. Okay. 100 mile radius is our okay. general geographical okay. area. And the 75 artists, were they widowed down from how many? Uh, how many I, do people I enter? Think we, I think we had... <laughs> Uh, we had over 200 and I think 70 some artists okay. uh, or submissions originally. Um, so it was a narrowing process. Our juror spent a day there looking at images of every, every uh, piece of artwork that was submitted um, and really making the final selection. So we have 75 artists and um, quite a few works of art. Uh, okay. And I can't say exactly how many at this point. Um, that's still um, kind of a secret. Okay. Uh, you, you'll find out on the 26th. <laughs> Uh, Are they all paintings? No, it's a variety. There oh, okay. are everything from okay. paintings, collage, sculpture, okay. installation, video. Okay. Um, so it's a, a nice combination of works. Okay, that sounds that sounds good. And that's going to go for many months, so people can go down there. One thing I mentioned, we'll get to it later, besides going to the... Um, the Institute, there's, there's many days we can go for free for the family, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. And then your second big one for this fall starts October 11th. It's called Undercover. Revealing designs in quilts, coverlets, and bed hangings. And this seems to me, I was reading the description, what's it like a sort of a cultural history of, of bed covers of all types? It says, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it is. I think it's a nice way to look at something uh, mundane. You know, we, we all have bed covers of some sort. But uh, really, over the last few centuries, from the 18th century up uh, into the 20th century, a lot of our bed covers, our quilts, our, our woven coverlets, have had um, 
political statements woven or designed into them. They've had designs that reflect a broader sort of cultural connection um, that uh, Albanians have had to the world. Um, this is really a way for the Albany Institute to look at some of the great bed covers in our own collection, <laughs> things that have not been exhibited in some cases ever or in, in decades. Um, and I can tell you that uh, um, it begins really in the 1740s, our earliest uh, uh, object included in the exhibition is a complete set of cruel embroidered bed hangings that were actually done in Connecticut but descended directly through the family into the Voris family of the okay. Albany area and arrived at the Albany Institute earlier in the 20th century and um, those will be exhibited. So um, beautiful cruel embroidered bed hangings with um, uh, dozens of various uh, designs, interesting birds, flowers that were really inspired by East Indian textiles uh, so it's a nice Are, connection is everything in this exhibit from your collection? Every, everything is from our own collection. There are about 25 to 30 pieces, um, as well as some complementary things, too. Uh, for example, um, we have one quilt that was embroidered with uh, little children's designs, and some of the figures came right out of um, the British uh, uh, children's book illustrator, Kate Greenaway's book. Okay. So, for example, we'll have this great quilt that was um, quilted and then also embroidered in the Albany area, along with one of Kate Greenaway's books. So now, as your chief curator, was this, how do you come up with an idea like doing something like this? <laughs> well, you know, it's a combination. All of our exhibitions are really de determined by a broad group, not just myself. It's uh, collaboration um, with our uh, education department, with our marketing and PR department, our development department, our shop. Um, it's really kind of all of us looking at what uh, represents not only our own collections and our own mission, okay. um, what, what uh, also enhances our community community, our understanding of our community, but also, you know, what is different? What, uh, you know, what would bring people into the institute okay. that they haven't had a chance to see? Now, like your other one, you said you weren't going to reveal too much. Can you reveal, like, maybe one little thing about the, <laughs> one of these bed things that might pique people's interest? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, I mentioned the cruel bed hangings. Um, there's another uh, another work, for example. There's a, um, we actually have two log cabin quilts. Um, both of them uh, originated in Albany families, probably made around the 1870s possibly a little earlier, and um, uh, it's a quilt pattern that many quilters know, but when you really see them exhibited on the wall, the artistry and the designs, the various designs that can be produced from very tiny, thin strips of fabric stitched together, it's amazing. Um, and it's also interesting, we're going to be looking at the origins of some of these uh, titles or names. So uh, a log cabin quilt is designed with, again, very thin strips of fabric that really look like logs stacked on top of each other, almost okay. like a log cabin. And um, this was a pattern that, uh, for quilt historians, they are aware that this was a pattern that really came out in the 1860s, the time um, when Abraham Lincoln was in office. And we think back to Abraham Lincoln. He was um, referred to as the rail splitter in the 1860 yeah. campaign. <laughs> but more importantly, he also um, was born in a log cabin, oh, which okay. is now preserved. So um, you know, the origins of some of these patterns are pretty interesting. Okay, And then we're having for both these the two we've mentioned Elizabeth, you're having a lot of supporting events I guess you call yes. lectures book signings etc how do great. um how do you come how do you think up all this ancillary stuff to go with the show or I don't know this curator do you, do you have stuff to do with these two or maybe you, oh, you could go first Doug is go. great he is always sending me ideas for books <laughs> to carry in the shop and our mission at the Albany Institute of History and Art is to promote interest in the history art and culture of Albany and the Hudson Valley and as the museum shop manager that's a wonderful thing to do because so much ties into the history and art and culture of our area it's really easy to find books it's really easy to find authors it's really easy to find artists to do crafts locally. Um, so it's a lot of fun because what I do in the shop is I try to make connections between what the education mm -hmm. department is doing, what the curatorial department is doing, and what we sell in the shop. And we have a wonderful slate of lecture book signings coming up this fall, which I'm very happy to tell okay. you about. Some of them are free events. Some of them are free with paid admission. Some of them are organized by our curatorial department where they invite in a lecture series, they invite prominent scholars to come and look at our collection and give insights into how our collection specifically sheds light on the nation's culture and art history. Um, now, I know a, a lot so of your authors and speakers, they're sort of connected with the exhibits, right? Yes. More so or less. Some, um, some of the authors 
are connected, and some are just local authors. But even the ones that write fiction, they are, they're using history of Albany to tell their stories, and that's really, really interesting. Not one of the speakers we have is just off, off the cuff. It, okay. <laughs> everything ties back to what the museum does as a whole. And uh, these programs are nice because they bring new visitors into the okay. museum. Yeah. Well, um, why don't you... Yeah, give, I'd love to yeah, mention talk, some of the ones that are coming with, up, yeah. and you will see the quality of the programs <laughs> that we do. Um, the and first, you even have the books you're going to... I, have, good I don't have copies of all the books, but I do have some. I'll hold them up or lay them down, which would be better. Sure, you can just do that. Okay. And then you can talk about... Good. Um, when they're speaking and, okay. and what the, it goes with. These, ex or these lectures are coming up uh, uh, at the end of September. The first one is on September 19th. New Netherland Connections, Intimate Networks and Atlantic Ties in 17th Century America is um, uh, a book that ties into our ongoing exhibition, Traders and Culture, Colonial America and the Formation of American Identity. Susan Shaw Romney is Assistant Professor of History at the University of Arkansas, Little Rock, and she won two prizes for this book, the 2013 Jamestown Prize from the Omohundro Institute of Early American History in Williamsburg, Virginia, and she also won the 2013 Hendricks Award from um, the New Netherland Institute here in Albany for a fascinating talk, um, or a fascinating book about the real women and men, soldiers and sailors, settlers, Native Americans, and enslaved Africans who drew on kin and social relationships to build new lives in the Dutch colony of New Netherland. Um, the second book we have on Dutch history is by Russell Shorto, who is the New York Times best-selling author who wrote the book Island at the oh, Center right. of the very, World, that's a very popular book, which was yeah. on the New York Times bestseller list for years. And it was the story of Dutch Manhattan and the forgotten colony that shaped America. But the book was drawn on the research that was done by area scholar Charles Gehring of the New Netherland okay. Institute. And um, after completing Island at the Center of the World, Russell Shorto went on to work as the director of the John Adams Institute in Amsterdam. And this book is a result of his years in Holland. Um, it's called Amsterdam, A History of the World's Most Liberal City. Um, it received a starred review in Publishers Weekly. Russell Shorter was a great speaker. And this is, book is an exploration of the history of Holland's capital city, including the artists, crusaders, explorers, eccentrics, and visionaries who helped Amsterdam grow into a world-class city with far-reaching global impact. So that, that's a whole a whole history of Amsterdam. Right. Now, is, is Albany mentioned in there? Or, um, you know? Albany is peripheral because okay. this is the study of Amsterdam. Okay. But um, when Albany se celebrated its 400 year history, the Dutch were very interesting. Mm -hmm. They sent people over because they're very um, interested in the connection between Albany and Holland. And this lecture is on. Um, September 22nd. So that's just two lectures okay. in September. Well, that author, he's very he's very popular. He's author. a very popular speaker and we're delighted to have him here. I and should mention before you yeah. go to the next. Oh. The books the books and lectures you're talking about, these go with many of your ongoing Yes. an ongoing um, Exhibit is just means right. it's, it, yeah. there's no time limit? What's yeah, we have several exhibitions that are, are ongoing. They've been mm -hmm. up for a while and they will continue. They're exhibitions that really highlight our collections as well as um, the history of the community. Well, I know the um, ancient Egypt and, and the Hudson River School, they, they're the, sort of the centerpieces of your... Yeah, um, of the, the Egyptian collection, we just uh, closed our large um, uh, exhibition, uh, Mystery of the Albany Mummies. Yeah, that was a very popular exhibition. Um, but we've reinstalled those, so our ancient Egyptian galleries are now open. Okay. Um, we also have highlights of our Hudson River School collection, um, which is a perennial favorite with tourists coming in from outside the region as well as locals. Um, Elizabeth mentioned Traders and Culture, which is an exhibition, an ongoing exhibition on Colonial Albany. Um, really That's the one that that New Netherlands book went with? Yes. Okay. Well, it relates. It relates, it relates. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And okay. I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I think um, many of the, uh, uh, the stories that are told in that book, you can see see very similar things happening in colonial Albany. So okay. um, they're connected. So and then so ancient Egypt is always there, Hudson River School, and then the nineteenth century sculpture is an ongoing Yes. Um, a gathering or a gather of glass. A gather of glass. Those are highlights of our glass collection okay. and those are still up. Um, that is a kind of a long term exhibition. It will mm -hmm. eventually close and then we will um, replace that with other highlights from our collection. And then you have an Albanian in Japan, who is it Robert 
Robert Prime. Robert okay. Houston Prime. The Prime House here in Colony. Okay. And what, what, what does that involve? Some of his mementos of his trip to... Uh, he wasn't... He, he was actually in Japan as the second ambassador under Abraham Lincoln. Oh, okay. So um, a very important diplomat uh, very early on in, in the, con uh, the diplomatic relationships that were existing between the United States and okay. Japan in the early 1860s. So earliest photographs, uh, or some of the earliest photographs taken in Japan, as well as correspondence uh, sent home, other things that he was bringing back. Okay. And these are all things that, you know, I think when, when your director was here, I was saying, it sounds like you have a gigantic storehouse of, <laughs> of all these things, because you're always saying, part of our collection. No, it's part of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so now, we're, let's go back to this fall. Okay. You have and, more lectures and book signings right. and, and events. Just for everybody, if you miss the date, if I say the date and you miss it, please go to our website, because all this information yes. will be on our website. Um, a lecture, a book signing that we have. Um, this, on, this is one of your fiction. Okay. Yes. This book is amazing. I'm hoping, I'm rooting that it goes on the New York Times bestseller list. It's by first-time novelist um, Jacopo della Quirca, but his real name, he lives in Albany. He's a historian. His real name, he writes under a pen name. Um, his real name is Giacomo Calabria, and he um, will be speaking at the museum. He's going to do a library talk about this new book, which is part science fiction, part action adventure, and part comedy embedded in a narrative that's totally based on meticulous research. In, he challenges Does it the take beach, place in is, Albany? Um, parts of it take okay. place in Albany, and he challenges especially young adult readers. He really wants them to see that history is interesting, and he challenges them to sit at the computer and check every historical event that happens. Oh, okay. It's true. But the plot of the book is totally well, fictional. Didn't, the title is, because you didn't it's the, the called The Great is, American, no, The Great Abraham Lincoln Pocket Watch, Watch Conspiracy. Yes. Okay, that sounds... And um, in the book, a globe-trotting President Taft goes with Robert Todd Lincoln, and they race across the globe to solve a mystery stretching back to the Civil War and the Abraham Lincoln assassination in order to save the 20th century. The result is an outlandish secret, secret history that aligns perfectly with the official record of national history, as well as the city of Albany's historical record. Um, Calabria is an educator and a history writer whose work has been featured on the comedy website crack.com. He's written for BBC America, CNN, and the Huffington Post. It's a very serious researched historical fiction book, and people will enjoy it. They call him the modern-day Jules Verne, and okay. I think it will be a really entertaining talk. Have you now? Have you read that book yet? I I have read bits and pieces. I hate being yeah. asked to talk about books because okay. we have so many great ones. I read <laughs> excerpts, but it's very rare I can get through the whole thing. Okay. Um, so what? I know I would tell people. I'll mention it because you just said go to AlbanyInstitute.org. There's way too many events here to talk about, but you can give us a few I'll more try highlights. I'll give you a couple more <laughs> highlights. Actually, the next uh, speaker I want to mention very quickly is Frankie Bailey, who is a professor of criminal justice. I don't have one of her books to show you. She's a professor of criminal justice at SUNY Albany, and she's written numerous nonfiction books, um, included Wicked Albany, which is a history of Albany and there of prohibition. But she's also a mystery writer who has won numerous awards, including a McCavity Award and several nominations for an Edgar Award. And she also um, sets uh, researches her novels and base them on um, Albany history, but her novels are um, uh, police procedural set in the future. And she will be talking at the Albany Institute on one of our free Thursday evening programs on October 30th. Now, how far in the future do you know? Only a couple <laughs> years. Yes. I, you know, I was Only bring, about a decade in the future. I was going to bring that book up. Oh, really? But okay. it was checked out. It was so checked out. So I think out, she's, yes. she's very popular. Her first, the, uh, the two books that are set in Albany are the H Detective Hannah McCabe mystery yeah. books. And the first one is out, The Wet Red Queen Dies. And the new one, What the Fly Saw, won't be out till March. Okay. But she's going to tell us how, quote, how Booth, Lincoln, and Houdini, and Albany are all connected in one big mystery. Okay. And so uh, it will be a great talk. So 
Um, the next, book, uh, next lecture, I do have a book, and it ties in directly with our Hudson River School exhibitions. And we will be having, um, as part of our Making It America lecture series, um, that is a lecture series now in its third year, in which renowned scholars are invited to come and look at our collections and talk about how our collections reflect on national history. And Dr. Paul Schweitzer, the Director Emeritus of the Munson William Proctor Art Institute, will be at the museum on November 2nd. He will be talking about um, America, e America's Eden, Thomas Cole, and the Voyage of Life. Um, we do have the earliest sketches for Cole's study on the Voyage of Life, as well as the original oil studies on panel. The Munson William Proctor holds the first complete painted set, and then the National Gallery holds the second set, which is a humongous canvases okay. and uh, very important works by Thomas Cole called The Voyage of Life. And there'll be a lecture on that topic at so, the museum November now, 2nd. Are you, how do you get these authors? Is, is that whose idea, or how do you contact? Oh. Is Doug, do you oh. well, make you suggestions, know, or do you have, have a... You know, in very collaborative. Yeah. <laughs> in, in this case here, Paul Schweitzer actually used a number of our own collections as his okay. research. For, um, this, for the book? For okay. this book. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, is familiar with us, spent quite a bit of time in our um, library and archives looking at uh, um, our own um, holdings of coal materials. Okay. Um, I should say, because for your big ancient Egypt, you had people from all over the world were speaking. Yes. And I noticed a lot of your people this fall speakers are from all over the country. Yes, we okay. do get um, the curatorial department, the education department, and the shop all work to invite different speakers to come to the museum. Okay. So it's a nice mix of scholarly programs and also some low-key programs that are just fun okay. to, uh, for book lovers. And I should say, again, this is on the website, mm -hmm. there's plenty of programs for kids. You have oh a, yeah, have a lot here for right. I don't have any kids' books, but our education department ongoing has okay. art making programs for kids every weekend um, on family festival days and holidays. There's always art making programs. Now, can you why don't you mention um, before you get your next book yeah. or speaker? Columbus Day, mm -hmm. which is Monday, um, October 13th, Veterans Day, Tuesday, November 11th, and Thanksgiving weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The, Every, okay. You can come in free, or tell us about these yes. free free days. Um, the museum, um, we we love when you come and pay admission because the admission <laughs> definitely supports the great programs that we do and the great exhibitions mm -hmm. that we do. But we are free every Thursday evening from 5 to 8. We are free every first Friday evening of the month from 5 to 8. And then we regularly, um, in this case sponsored by M&T Bank, we will be free on Monday, Columbus Day holiday. Okay. And there will be art make, making and gallery tours um, all day. We will also be free on Veterans Day, which is a holiday Tuesday, again sponsored by M&T Bank. And I see you have... Um you have special talks that day yes, about veterans are, in the military. Yes, there okay. are special lectures that okay. day, as well as, again, the art mm -hmm. making and the gallery tours. And so then Thanksgiving weekend? Or? Thanksgiving weekend is a three-day free <laughs> event. Now, we're not saying come on the free day. Come <laughs> many, many times. Come the first time and pay, and then bring everybody back on the free day because you loved your visit so much. But on Thanksgiving weekend, we have a three-day festival. Let me just get to the page because there's so much going on that day. Um, it's called Home for the Holidays, and in addition to the exhibitions, there will be a special holiday display of a, trees with a, a tree with decorated ornaments by area artists and other small trees uh, with handmade ornaments submitted by the community. There will be a display of quilt blocks submitted um, in our quilt block challenge that our education department is sponsoring, and you can go on the website to learn more about that. Um, visitors can watch demonstrations of cruel work by the um, uh, Embroiders Guild of America and participate in art making workshops, including ornament making. The shop will be selling Dutch um, tiles, Dutch ornaments, Dutch cookies and treats. And that's the day that we're having um, Peter Rose, um, who is a woman. Uh, she was born in Holland. And she will be speaking um, about her new book called Delicious December, How the Dutch Brought Us Santa Presents and Treats, a holiday cookbook. Um, she, Peter Rose is an award-winning food historian. She's lectured at the Smithsonian, the National Gallery of Art, the Culinary Arts Institute. She's been called a national treasure by food writer Molly O'Neill. And um, she visits the museum regularly, and this time she'll be talking and sharing some treasured Dutch recipes um, 
and it will just be a part of a wonderful three-day family weekend where you can enjoy your time with your family and come to okay. the museum and celebrate in a very special way. That sounds excellent. I yep. mean, you can't be free. And here, here's the book. <laughs> Sorry. That's the book, okay. Delicious December um, by Peter Rose. Okay, now you do have, going back to the quilts and the um, the bed you're having a speaker about, you have a lecture about that topic? One of the... Um... Doug is doing a very special... <laughs> okay, tour. yes. Um, I'll be doing some uh, in-gallery tours, uh, talks. Uh, we'll take some close looks at some of the textiles on exhibit. And then I think, Elizabeth, actually there is another book, another speaker, that yeah, um, th there is a connection, um, especially mm -hmm. dealing with uh, female education early in the 19th century. I lost those notes. But it's called <laughs> To Elevate and Adorn the Mind. And it is a book um, about Elizabeth Colt. I thought we were going to skip that part, so excuse me. Um, to Elevate and Adorn the Mind. Uh, the story of Betsy Coltfoot and, and the founding of the Albany Academy for Girls. Um, this is a book about set in Albany, 1815, and it's the story of one woman's radical quest to provide an op the opportunity for girls to receive a more formal education above and beyond the education that they would receive in the home, which included much um, needlework. Now, she just speaking. Is there an exhibit to go with that, or just um, she's just... There, it, no, there's okay. no exhibit. There is one painting. I don't know okay. if it will be on display, but there is a painting. I forget what of, it is. Where's the book? Of, of Betsy Cole. Yes. Yes, this is a picture. Okay, you very can good. Tell me. Our, yeah, this is a, a painting of um, Betsy Colt Foot, um, the young girl who is featured in the in the fiction. Oh, okay. And the painting itself was recently donated by um, a family member, uh, so we're very happy that the painting has come to us. Um, the speaker of, of this historical fiction is going to be talking, so there's a nice connection oh, again okay. between oh, the co the collections and uh, local history. All right. Um, I just wanted to say the author of this book. You have more notes over there than I do, and I have a lot. <laughs> Copeland Marks. Um, well, this because there's a lot of different books, a lot of different authors, a lot of different titles. Um, Louise Copeland Marks is a, a graduate of the Albany Academy for Girls, and she's um, associate professor emeritus of sociology, psycho psychology, and mental health at SUNY's North Country Community. Okay. This was a very well researched book. Okay. So, so um, Doug, this is long range, but what you can just mention briefly, starting in next February, you're having a big exhibit called Baseball at the Institute. Give us a little bit about that, because we'll, you, you sure. can go back later and talk about that. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, opening next February in 2015, it's actually called Triple Play because there are three ex uh, exhibitions all dealing with baseball. There's a traveling exhibition that will look at um, baseball memorabilia nationally. Um, there's uh, an exhibition that we're doing that will look specifically at baseball in the capital region, so a nice history of mm -hmm. baseball stretching back into the middle part of the 19th century. And then there's um, another exhibition called uh, um, From the uh, Locker Room, which is looking at collections that people in the capital region have centered around baseball. So of their own collections. Their own it collections, and we'll be borrowing parts of those collections. So, but it, so. that, that could be anything, right? If uh, anything related to baseball. So. Um, and, and people collect the strangest uh, I know. Related to baseball, they do. So. Okay. Well. Wait, wait. Can I oh yes, another. Book? Yes, baseball you're right. <laughs> will be very popular, but we don't want to forget about our permanent ancient Egypt exhibition. Okay, this goes with the ongoing Egypt. Okay. Yes, it does, and this is very important. Um, November 9th, This isn't a book matter, but we do celebrate every year our mummy's birthday. So on November 9th, it's the anniversary, um, 105th anniversary of the Albany mummies arriving in Albany, and children are invited to bring a doll or stuffed toy and learn how to mummify it. That's always a fun event. Um, and then just a week later, on November 16th, Kara Cooney, who is Associate Professor of Egyptian Art and Architecture at UCLA, um, she was also the co-curator of the Tutankhamun and the Golden Age of Pharaohs exhibition at the Los Angeles County of Art in 2005. And she has written a book um, using the latest field research and her expertise knowledge of the history of ancient Egypt to tell the story of Hatshepsut, who was the second um, woman pharaoh and the longest reigning woman pharaoh. Uh, she was a remarkable woman who was born the daughter of a general and maneuvered uh, to become pharaoh in a world where power was 
uh, synonymous with masculinity. Um, this book has been widely praised. It's not out yet. This is just a reader's okay. copy. It's coming out this fall. And it satisfies both scholars and the general public because really we, you need to know a lot about ancient Egypt to fill in the gaps mm -hmm. about everyday life um, in telling the story of Hatshepsut, who is one of the most fascinating women one of the most fascinating people and, in and, Egyptian history. And so Kara Cooney's, what's the date of that again? That date is okay. uh, November or 16th, okay. and that's a very um, exciting lecture we're really looking forward All to. All right, well, before we finish, I just have another one or two more quick questions. Yeah. When people come down, obviously they can just go walk around and see what they want, but what are the, are there guided tours or people? There are guided tours, uh, mostly on the weekends. You, okay, can, so find, okay. uh, you can find the times uh, on our website, um, or if you're a member, you'll find times in our newsletter. Um, and then there are also special guided tours. Again, I'm going to be doing different tours, for example, of the undercover exhibition okay. through the fall. And, and again, you can find all of this information okay. on our website. All right. That's albanyinstitute.org. Well, this is... I just and want to add on yes, the Yes, yes, another sorry, item. <laughs> you, you can sign up for a weekly announcement. Um, there is always so much going on at the museum. It's really easy to miss an important event or lecture or exhibition. And you can sign up on our website to receive a weekly email, um, which is great help. Okay. And what? Up. And now, we, I forgot, the Antiquarian Book Fair. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'll mention one last thing. Um, coming up on uh, Sunday, October 19th, is the 40th annual Antiquarian Book and Ephemera Show. That's hosted by the Albany Institute. It's at the um, Washington Avenue Armory. And the proceeds from the admission from the um, silent auction that mm -hmm. we'll be having there and from appraisals really go to support the Albany Inst Institute's library. Okay. So um, it's really a nice way to help us out. And what was the date of that again? Uh, that's Sunday, October 19th. Yes. I, no, I've been to that many times. That's a yeah. good, if, if you like old books and... Um, Postcards, ephemera, postcards. maps. I mean, it's it's amazing what you'll find. Photographs. Okay. Yeah. Now, is any of the stuff there from, from your guy's warehouse? Or? Uh, no, not from our own collections. <laughs> okay. al although, again, the silent auction materials are things that have been generally given to us for this strict oh, okay. purpose of selling again okay. because the proceeds will benefit the library okay. at the Institute. Very good. So, Elizabeth, before we end, do you have anything else? <laughs> well, I would say that we have barely mentioned um, all the different things that go on at the museum. Okay. Our Toot for Tots program, Art for All, which is uh, creative activities for the whole family. We have teacher programs, Girl Scout programs, special events like the Antiquarian Book Fair and Home for the Holidays. Um, and we really want you to come. Okay, so it's albanyinstitute.org. So, Doug, Elizabeth, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. For coming down. And we will see you next time on Getting to Know You.